Hi guys, so in this video we are going to go over series with both the geometric series formula and sigma notation. So let's see, we have write an expression to represent the sum of the first eight terms in the series. 2, negative 6, plus 18, negative 54, using both sigma notation and the formula. So I think I'm going to start with the formula because that one's definitely easier. When they say use a formula, that is on your reference sheet. And that is the formula S sub N equals A sub 1 minus A sub 1 R to the N over 1 minus R. Now, when they're saying the first eight terms, they're saying that N equals 8. The first term is 2, A sub 1. And then the pattern. Let's see, this is geometric, so we're multiplying by a common ratio. The pattern is that we're multiplying by negative 3. So I'm going to put r equals negative 3. That means with the formula, s sub 8 equals a sub 1, which is 2. r is negative 3 to the 8th power. Please use parentheses. If you would like to put 1 plus 3 on the bottom or just 4, go for it. But that is using the formula. Now, with sigma notation, the first thing you need is the explicit formula. The explicit formula for a geometric sequence is this. And let's see, that means we have a sub n equals a sub 1, which is 2, r is negative 3, to the n minus 1. We are going to take this formula, write it down here, and then we are going to slap a series in front of it, or sorry, a sigma in front of it. And we are going from n equals 1 to, let's see, we did the first eight terms to 8. So this is by saying, take 2 times negative 3 to the n minus 1, that pattern, and you're going to add all the terms from the first term to the eighth term. And you get the same number if you put both in the calculator. Oops. There we go. Let's try some regions questions. We have beginning July 1st, 2019, Michelle deposited 250 into an account that yields 15, 0.15% each month. She continued to make deposits into this account on the first of each month for three years. Which expression represents the amount of money in the account after her last deposit was made? So the first thing that you should notice is that yes, you're given three years but they're talking about the um, percentage being each month. So three years is 36 months. And that means we should automatically cross out one and three. Now, it's kind of hard to tell that this one is actually a series. If she just put 250 into an account and that was it, for 36 years, <laughs> that would be great, and we would be done with it. It would be choice two. But the issue is that she's not just putting only $250 into an account. She's doing $250 into an account each month. So, for example, she has $250 in an account at the beginning of July, and she puts it into the account for what, three years? So that's 36 months. That's how much that, um, that's how long that 250 is going to stay in. And then she puts another 250 into an account the next month, but because that's one month later, that 250 only has 35 months to accrue interest. 
And then that was what, February? Then March, she puts another 250 into an account. But because that is again one month later, that $250 only has 34 months to accrue interest. And you want to see how much money that they made in total. So what I'm trying to show you is that this is really a series where you're adding up all the terms together. Now, if you notice, when anytime they have this uh, format, it kind of looks like the geometric series formula. Where A sub 1 is 250, and you have your value of R is, first of all, you are increasing, so this is going to be 1 plus R, which is 1 plus your rate. which is 1 plus 0 0.015, which is 1.015. And how long are you doing this for? You're doing it for three years. So N is 36 months. Now, I know this is going to June, but that's because they're counting July as the first. If you really went to June again, um, sorry, July is the uh, first A sub 1, not A sub 0 here. So because you're counting July 1st as your initial value, it's actually 36 months until you get to June. And if you did 37 months, um, that would be back to July. It's weird. But this is your only answer choice. You have a company fired several employees in order to save money. Ouch. The amount of money the company saved per year over the five years of the loss is shown in the table below. They want an expression that determines the total amount of money saved. So we have A sub 1 is 59,000. And N is... Five. Let's see how much money they saved in total. If you want to figure out how much money they saved, you have to go backwards. You got to do 64,900 divided by 59,000. Now, just based on my answer choices, I'm going to assume that this is 1.1 because look at all my answer choices. They're all 1.1 except for 0.1, which is not cool can't be 0.1 because 0.1 is less than 1, which would indicate that you are decaying. And you're not decaying, you're increasing, so it has to be 1.1. Anyway, if you have the formula S sub N equals A sub 1 minus A sub 1 R to the N minus 1, oop, sorry, to the N, over 1 minus r. We have s sub 5 equals the first term 59,000. r we said was 1.1. n is 5 over 1 minus 1 1.1. That actually looks like it's pretty right. Let's check the other one. In order to do sigma notation, you need your explicit formula. The explicit formula is a sub n equals a sub 1 r to the n minus 1. So the explicit formula is 59,000 r to the n minus 1. You're going to take this piece and you're going to put a sigma in front of it from n equals 1 to 5. So you can see that choice 3 is wrong because it's missing the n minus 1. So choice 1 is kind of our only option. We have John and Margaret deposit 500 into the savings account for their son on his first birthday. 
They continued to make a deposit of 500 on the child's birthday, with the last deposit being made on the child's 21st birthday. If an account pays 4% annual interest, annual is yearly, so this is good because we're doing each year and the rate is yearly. Which equation represents the amount of money in the account after the last deposit is made? So we have another situation like point one, uh, number one, where you keep depositing 500 on each birthday. So the first 500 has all 21 years to accrue. The second 500 only has 20 years. The third 500 has 19 years. The fourth 500 has um, 18 years. And you want to add up all of these terms. And because you want to add up all of that money, that's what creates this and turns this into a series. So you have S sub N equals A sub 1 minus A sub 1 R to the N over 1 minus R. Now, because you're doing 21 years, n is equal to 21, a sub 1 is 500, and because you're increasing, you're doing 1 plus 3. 1 plus 3 is going to be 1 plus 0 0.04, and that's going to be 1.04. So let's see what we get. We get s sub 21 equals 500 minus 500 oops n was 21 and r was 1.04 so that doesn't quite look like either of them i mean this one's wrong because it doesn't have a 1. 0, 4. So I would just cross out 4. But if you notice, there's a GCF here. So what happens if you write the GCF on the outside? If you write the 500 on the outside, what are you going to be left with? This is really 500 times, um, times 1. So this is 1 minus, if you take the 500 out of the second one, you got 1.04 to the 21st power. So this one was a bit harder because you had to notice the GCF of 500. And if you didn't notice, what you could do is put answer choice 2 in the calculator and put your answer in the calculator, and you'll see that they'll be the exact same values. Okay, we got two more. So given the geometric series that, they want the geometric series formula. So we have the formula is S sub N equals A sub 1 minus A sub 1 R to the N over 1 minus R. Let's see, they want the sum of the first N terms. So we're going to leave N alone. A sub 1 is 300. Now you need to figure out what is A sub N. Sorry, R. You need to figure out R. So you're going to go backwards. You're going to do 360 divided by 300. Which is 1.2. And then you're going to go backwards again. And you're going to double check yourself. 432 divided by 360. And that is also 1.2. So that means that R is equal to 1.2. Oops. There we go. So I have S sub N equals A sub 1, which is 300. 1.2 N over 1 minus 1.2. This is your first piece. They just wanted the formula. And if they wanted sigma, they would either say sigma or summation notation. Now for the second piece, they want you to use the formula to find the sum of the first 10 terms. So they're saying let n equals 10.
Now, what I suggest is that you put this in the calculator to make sure you can get the same answer. You need to start with alpha y equals. Please don't use the division button. You'll most likely get it wrong. So if you were to put this in your calculator, and unfortunately I can't put, pull the calculator up on my computer, you should be getting this. And they said round to the nearest tenth. So this is 7,787.7. 6. All right, last one. We have the initial push of a child on a swing causes the swing to travel a total of 6 feet. Now, because they said initial, that sounds like A sub 1 equals 6 to me. Each successive swing travels 80% of the distance of the previous swing. So this is your value of R. They're telling you how much you're keeping. So usually they tell you how much you're losing. And if you're losing, that would be the rate. It'd be 1 minus the 20% is that you're increasing 80%. But here they're just flat out saying you're keeping 80%. You don't have to do anything with it. They want you to find the total distance. So total to me means series, the nearest hundredth of a foot a travel, a child travels on the first five swings. So n is equal to five. We have, because it's a series and you're adding everything up, you could use the geometric series formula, probably the easiest thing to use. Okay, if you were to put that in the calculator, let's see what you get. Please use alpha y equals. Please actually try. You don't want to get to the test and then realize you can't actually do this. I'm getting 20.1696, and they said to the nearest hundredth, so that should be 20.17. Let's go back and do this with sigma notation though. So that was with the series formula. If you wanted to use summation notation, or sigma, the first thing you gotta do is use the explicit formula. Now the explicit formula for a geometric series is a sub n equals a sub 1 r to the n minus 1. Now a sub 1 we said was, what was it? 6 feet. r was 0.8 to the n minus 1. You are going to take this And you're going to put a sigma on the outside. You're going from the first term all the way up to the fifth term. And notice how I have n and n. My variables match. You need to make sure they're the same thing. In order to do this in the calculator, you're going to go to alpha window choice two. Oh, this was step two, sigma. And in your calculator, it should say summation. Okay. In your calculator, you have to use x because you don't have n. And let's see, we get 0.8. You should be getting the same answer, 20.17. But in your calculator, it's also going to have these weird outside parentheses as well. That's fine. But 
you get the same thing. Anyway, that's all for this video. Uh, I do think using the geometric sequence, sorry, geometric series formula is easier than using sigma, especially because you don't have to remember what it is since it's on your reference sheet. See ya!